This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. NFL win totals are now posted at FanDuel Sportsbook for this upcoming year, which means we've got a lot to dig into. 32 teams have win totals up at FanDuel Sportsbook. And as mentioned, as we've been discussing free agency, I do have my own model as well, where I have projected win totals for each team, which means we can compare those to the market and try to identify spots where there could potentially be value over at FanDuel Sportsbook. What we're going to do for today is dig into those initial win totals and outline five spots where my numbers deviate from the market and four of those i want to bet right now to lock them in before things could potentially change throughout the offseason so today digging into nfl win totals at fanduel sportsbook and letting you know which ones i'm targeting right now welcome on into covering the spread that's right here on the fanduel podcast network and fanduel research my name is jim sonis i am a managing editor of digital media for fanduel research here to break down my thoughts on the opening 2024 nfl win totals over at fanduel sportsbook and let you know where i'm seeing value for this upcoming year. We'll dive into all that here in just one second. First, wanted to remind you that we do have some MLB betting talk daily over on the FanDuel Research podcast feed. That is the solo shot, our daily MLB podcast. I go through my top props of the day, talked about a couple of strikeout props for today and a home run prop, and of course, talk some DFS as well. So if you want some thoughts on each day's MLB slate, make sure you're subscribed to the FanDuel Research podcast feed to get the solo shot as it goes up each and every weekday. That show is also over on FanDuel TV Plus if you watch covering the spread. On FanDuel TV Plus, you can also watch the solo shot there. So again, if you're trying to bet baseball daily, you can find my thoughts on that, strikeout props, home run props, and more over on the FanDuel Research Podcast feed. We'll still talk baseball here on covering the spread too, but can't get to it every weekday because we got a lot of other stuff to cover as well. So if you want some daily baseball thoughts, subscribe to the FanDuel Research Podcast feed. Also, big stuff here this week on covering the spread, of course, the men's and women's Final Fours coming up next weekend. We'll talk about those throughout this week. A uh, lot of other stuff throughout the month of May as well. So subscribe to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast. You can find this on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus as well. And of course, if your bracket is busted, doesn't matter because you can still bet. Over at FanDuel Sportsbook for the men's and women's tournaments, you can bet on an upset, you can bet on the chalk, whatever you want. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, if you want to bet some futures, whatever it may be, you can do all that at FanDuel. Just go to FanDuel.com and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas the star casino llc first online real money wager only ten dollar first deposit required bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt see terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash rg colorado iowa michigan new jersey ohio pennsylvania illinois kentucky tennessee virginia north carolina and vermont call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in arizona 1-888-789-7777 or the ccpg.org slash chat Connecticut 1-800-9 with it in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit chaosgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelpline ma.org. Or call 800 327 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Or call one 877 Y or text Open Y in New York. Let's dig in now to the NFL win totals across 2024 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. It is a glorious thing to see these now posted there. We can dig into the markets. We're going to start with one I've been talking about quite a bit here on the show during free agency. It's not because this team has been buzzy, but because teams in their division have been a bit buzzy. I think the Saints are undervalued at FanDuel Sportsbook right now with their win total sitting at seven and a half wins. The over is minus 130, so you are paying a bit of a price to get there. But even considering that, I think that they're undervalued right now. This is the biggest discrepancy between what my model has, and what the market has, and the Saints have a good schedule and an efficient passing offense. And the defense last year was good despite having some impactful injuries. It's also an easy division. 
So that's why I like the Saints is those reasons. But I'd have them above seven and a half wins, even if they didn't have the division they were in. Like if you look at their power rating in my model and just kind of get a, a projected win total from that, not accounting for the teams they face, they'd be above seven and a half wins for me even before we account for the to- for their uh, for their schedule. And they get an, a bump of 0.8 wins for me based on their schedule for this year. Once you add in that schedule, I've got them well above this number. It's again, the biggest discrepancy on the board for me. And yeah, the Saints had some weird vibes last year. It's weird when Derek Carr is getting yelled at by his offensive linemen. You don't really want to have a lot of faith in those situations. And the division to get tougher with Kirk Cousins now in Atlanta. But they haven't lost a ton of key pieces yet. Uh, they could get better along the offensive line, which is a key issue last year. And it's important to remember, despite those weird vibes, they did still win nine games last year, going over this total by one and a half wins. So they'd have to get a bit worse in order to go under this number, even when you account for the fact that Kirk Cousins is in Atlanta as well. So of all the win totals at FanDuel Sportsbook right now, my favorite is the Saints over seven and a half wins, minus 130. I understand the concerns. I saw them last year too, but I can't get to this number being as low as it is. So to me, the Saints are the best win total to target at FanDuel Sportsbook. Over seven and a half, minus 130 is my favorite bet on the board with where things stand right now. Looking elsewhere, trying to find some other ones we have not discussed yet here on the show, uh, some teams we have not discussed. I like the Jags quite a bit, and this is a reversion for me because in 2021, the J- or 2022, I should say, the Jags were a team I bet constantly, and it became a bit annoying. It was always the Jags and the Lions showing value for me. Last year, things got a bit higher on the Jags than I could get to, so I ended up betting against them a lot, but I feel like my my numbers have had a good read on this team the past couple of years, buying into them when they've been good, selling them when they've been off. And I think now is the time to buy low on this team to bet on a good quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. Now, obviously last year, Lawrence was shaky at times, but he dealt with a lot of injuries and this offense, a lot of injuries, their offensive line was banged up. They had some weird things going on at wide receiver where they didn't have the good bodies. And you could say, Hey, I mean, like they lost Calvin Ridley and replaced him with Gabe Davis, which is a downgrade for sure. And they've had to cut some key contributors elsewhere, too. And they're still not as good as you'd like along the offensive line. So why would we want to take the over at eight and a half wins? Again, it's because of Lawrence. Because last year was what it was. But go back to 2022. He shredded that year and led this team to the postseason and and win the postseason, too, without Calvin Ridley. Ridley was suspended that year. He was on the roster for half the year, but he was suspended. And they could still have playmakers via the draft to replace that production they lost with Ridley. They got their first round pick, which should be in a good range to get a good wide receiver. They got a second round pick, uh, hopefully add some offensive line there. And this draft is deep in the positions where the Jags need help. If you give Trevor Lawrence the supporting cast of Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, Evan Ingram, and a solid rookie at wide receiver, I think that Lawrence can be efficient once again. That's why I've got the Jags win total at 9.6 wins right now. They're at eight and a half here at FanDuel Sportsbook over his minus 110. I'm pretty good buying into that gap. I also think you could justify betting the Jags to win the AFC South. Personally, I'm hesitant to do so because I don't want to bet against CJ Stroud. That feels gross. They're plus 240 right now to do so. So if you want some more upside, I think that could be the route you go is take the Jags to win the AFC South at plus 240. Don't feel the Titans as being a huge threat there. I think the Colts would be fine, uh, but the gap between the Jags and Colts, I think should be a bit wider. So to me, The best market to go with here to take advantage of the fact that Trevor Lawrence is being a bit slept on right now is the Jags over eight and a half wins minus 110. I think that's a pretty quality one, uh, just based on the fact that we've seen Lawrence be efficient with a bad supporting cast in the past. And I think he could do it again this year. And there's also a chance that the supporting cast could get a bit better. So Jags over eight and a half minus 110. Third win total I wanted to discuss involves a team that was pretty vexing to me last year in the Eagles. Uh, early on, my numbers should value betting against them quite a bit, and they continued to make me feel very stupid for that. That came around later on in the year where the team fell apart. It was profitable to bet against them. And you look at what happened with that defense, with that team last year. It was all about the defense. Like Jalen Hurts was still efficient down the backstretch of the year, not really in the playoffs, that one playoff game, but like 
the offense was good. It was a defense that struggled. And I don't think they've done enough to address concerns defensively. They did have Vic Fangio and that matters a lot because going from Matt Patricia, the second half of the year to Vic Fangio, you don't get a lot of DC changes that are going to be more impactful than that, but they lost Fletcher Cox. The secondary for the Eagles still pretty old. They brought back CJ Gardner Johnson, but struggled with injuries last year. So is he still the same player he was back in the day? You know, hard to tell there. I don't expect super stout linebacker play here, and that impacts uh, the run game, obviously, but also it can impact the passing game when, you know, tight ends, running backs can shred you in the passing game too. The movement at edge for the Eagles, obviously trading away Hassan Reddick. They brought in Bryce Huff. I think that's a pretty lateral move, honestly. Uh, Huff hasn't had a, a an every down role throughout his entire career, whereas Reddick has. So I view this as being more of a lateral move for the Eagles. So I guess my big question with them is, why should I expect this defense to be any better this year than it was last year outside of Vic Fangio? And Vic Fangio, again, does matter. But how much do we have to bake that in in order to get to a win total of 10 and a half? Then there's the offense. They did lose Jason Kelsey there too. They've got guys who can fill in. They've got some good depth along the offensive line. Jeff Stoutland is amazing as an O-line coach and it's okay to bet on him, but it's still a key piece to lose within that offense. And then you, you never really know if the bad vibes from last year will be fixed during this off season. So I've got the Eagles closer to nine wins than 11, which is what they'd need to get over on this number. Maybe Dallas struggles. Maybe Daniel Jones isn't healthy in week one. That can help them here. Maybe the commanders struggle with the rookie quarterback. That could open the door for the Eagles to go over 10 and a half wins, but it's hard for me to get there personally. So I'll take the Eagles under 10 and a half wins, minus 118. Again, showing good value there based on my numbers. And it's one I, I, I agree with the numbers as well. I need there to be a major, major adjustment up uh, for Vic Fangio to justify betting it over here. Eagles were involved in that Hassan Reddick trade over the weekend. Other side of the trade was the New York Jets. And the Jets win total right now at FanDuel Sports because at nine and a half, under is minus 115. And I understand what the Jets are doing. I think they're making some, some good bets on player personnel, and they're adding some good players. Players I like a lot. I love Tyron Smith. I love Mike Williams. So... They're adding good players, but it's a lot of gambles on older players who have had a lot of injury concerns. And that's where I think we see some value in the under here is because it's it's a it's a fragile team. Aaron Rodgers is 40, coming off a torn Achilles. Tyron Smith is 33. He has not played more than 13 games in the season since 2015. Morgan Moses is the other tackle for them. He's also 33 years old. Mike Williams, 29 years old, coming off a torn ACL. So I like all those guys and they're, they've played well in the not too distant past, but there's a lot of fragility there. That doesn't mean that Jets can't succeed because a very similar team to this, where it was re reliant on some players. And if those players get banged up, the whole house of cards comes down. That was the Rams the year they won the Super Bowl. Like they had a very similar setup and they kept Stafford, kept Aaron Donald, kept Jalen Ramsey healthy and they won, they won it all. So this type of approach can succeed, but there are paths to an under here. There is, what if Rodgers doesn't play well? What if Tyron Smith gets banged up and they have to deal with the, the offensive line injuries again? What if Mike Williams gets banged up and they once again are dependent on, you know, some questionable pieces behind Garrett Wilson? There are multiple paths to an under here for the Jets. I mean, their defense could regress too. There are a lot of paths here. So to me, I like the moves they've made. I like the guys they brought in because they have to kind of ball on a budget with the, the Rodgers cap hit and stuff like that. So I think they're making good moves, but I think that those moves still do leave them vulnerable to an under. So although I agree with what the Jets are doing, I do still think under nine and a half wins, minus, one minus 115 is the way to go here uh, for the Jets. So I'll take that myself as well, a FanDuel Sportsbook and bet against a team that has several paths under in my eyes. The final one I want to talk about is not one I actually want to bet right now, but one I want to keep in mind for later on this year and potentially target at a later point. That's the San Francisco 49ers. Over 11 and a half wins is even money right now. It's a really big number. You need to get 12 wins to get there, and it means you need to have good health at quarterback. You need to be good, obviously, 
but I think that we can still feel good about it in this instance. I've actually got the Niners projected for 13 wins right now, which is by far the most in the league. They get there because of how sick their offense was last year. And, you know, they had the injuries, Trent Williams and Debo Samuel, and they did lose a couple of games there, but they were still efficient in those games, despite the fact they didn't have those guys. And that gives me some faith here. But also they've got depth where if one guy goes down, they can step up. And the system is so good, they can win games even with guys being out. On the defensive side of things, there's been a lot of movement defensively this year from a personnel perspective, but I don't think they've gotten worse. They've just made a lot of guys subbed in and out, a lot of depth they've signed there. So I think it's been largely lateral move for them defensively. Now, I mentioned before, I like this number where it's at, but I don't want to bet it right now. And that comes down to Brandon Ayuk, because there have been a lot of rumors that Brandon Ayuk could get traded for the Niners. And that could happen around the draft, because they could trade him to, hypothetically, the Jags, get a mid-first-round pick in return, and try to replace Ayuk via the draft. If they were to trade Ayuk, I think this win total would come down. It's even money over 11.5 wins right now would probably get maybe plus 110, plus 120, somewhere in that range, if they were to trade Brandon Ayuk at some point this offseason. And I want to wait until that happens, if it were to happen. And the reason I'm okay waiting here is because I don't think this number will get a lot higher. Like, I don't think we're going to get taxed for waiting on the over 11 and a half wins because there's really no reason for this number to move upwards at this point. So what I want to do is wait until after the draft, see if they keep Ayuk and grab it then. Because again, there's a good chance this number goes down or we get a better number on the over if they do decide to trade Ayuk. And it would impact my win total model too. So I want to maybe run it without him and kind of see where it settles in then. But I don't think we'll get a worse number than this anytime soon. And we could get a better number if they were to trade Ayuk. So I like this number, the Niners over 11 and a half wins at even money. But I want to see how things play out before actually deciding to bet it. But overall... Really high in this team once again. They've won 12 or more games in three of the past five seasons, and two of those seasons did not include 17 games even. So I feel good about it. Just want to see how things transpire to see if we can get a better number later on or if we can feel good about uh, them if they do decide to keep Brandon Ayuk. So the five win totals I'm liking right now are uh, the Niners over 11 and a half even money. Not betting that one right now. The ones I do, I don't mind betting are the Jets under nine and a half uh, minus 115, Eagles under 10 and a half minus 118, like the Jags over eight and a half and minus 110, and the Saints over seven and a half at minus 130. That's all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. As mentioned, a lot of good stuff coming up throughout this week. Uh, we're talking some Final Four, talking other stuff. So make sure to subscribe to Covering the Spread. Wherever you get your podcast. find us on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus as well. And again, if you want some MLB betting action each weekday, check out the FanDuel Research Podcast feed and listen, feed and listen to the solo shot. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across Monday. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.